Well, there's Senator Ted Cruz doing some of what he does best, uncovering the truth, cross-examining uh, witnesses. It really is amazing to uh, behold. You know, even his enemies say he's one of the smartest people uh, they've ever met, one of the smartest Americans ever, perhaps. He's got a new book. It's called Unwoke. How to Defeat Cultural Marxism in America. Senator Ted Cruz, Republican of Texas. Welcome back to Newsmax. Congratulations on the book and the verdict with Ted Cruz, one of the hottest podcasts in the world. Congratulations. How are you? I'm doing terrific. Thank you, Greg. Thanks for having me on. Why this book? Why now? I mean, we know about the danger, but tell us your thinking behind it. Well, look, the world has gone crazy. Uh, we are seeing what we're seeing in, in Washington. It's more extreme. It's more radical than it's ever been. And I wrote this book to try to explain how the heck this happened. And, and in particular, what this book addresses is how the radical left seized every major institution of America. And each chapter of the book addresses a different institution. So it starts off with universities. And I, I call universities the Wuhan lab of the woke virus. They're where, they're where it was created, they're where it's mutated, where it's spread. From universities, the next chapter goes on to K through 12 education, and then journalism, and then government, and then big business, and then big tech, and then entertainment, Hollywood, movies, TV, sports, music, and then science, the politicization of science. And the last chapter deals with China and how China is a nexus intertwining them all. And what the book does is two things. It explains how and why the radical left infiltrated these institutions from within. And then even more importantly, it lays out a clear and practical battle plan for us to take these institutions back. Because if we don't take them back, we're gonna lose our country. Is the battle plan for you and your colleagues and office holders, um, or how about regular your readers, like regular people? Yes. Yes, what it is can a battle we... plan for everyone. And, and, and the battle plan is really three parts. Number one is sunshine and transparency. Look, the ideas of the radical left are wildly unpopular. They only are able to force them through using power and coercion and using indoctrination, so shining a light. So, for example, K-12 through education, I talk about what happened in Loudoun County, Virginia, where a teenage girl was sexually assaulted by a boy wearing a skirt in the girls' restroom. The school district covered it up. They denied that it happened because their political ideology was more important than protecting the kids. And the result, it infuriated moms and dads across Virginia. And it flipped Virginia from a blue state to a red state because moms got engaged. And by the way, parents are doing this all across the country. I'm supporting school board candidates throughout Texas and we're winning victories because when you shine a light, you can defeat these wildly unpopular ideas. That's number one. Number two is changing the cost-benefit analysis for institutions to increase the costs of going woke. And I do a deep dive in the chapter on big business on what happened on Bud Light and Target, where both of them went woke and lost tens of billions of dollars. And that disincentive, we need to increase the disincentive for, for, for giving in to the cultural Marxist. And number three, Greg, I encourage conservatives and libertarians who've been successful in business to invest in the organs of transmission of ideas. Buy a TV station, buy a radio station, buy a movie studio, buy a book publishing house, buy a record label, fight in the world of ideas. And my model for this, by the way, is Elon Musk's buying Twitter was the single most important step for free speech in decades, we need to invest in the battlefield of ideas and not cede the terrain to a leftist monopoly. Oh, I love it. It's all in unwoke. I, you know, I've come up with some more modest proposals, like people should write letters to their congressmen, post on social media, vote, know your rights. A lot of folks don't know the Eighth yeah. Amendment from yeah. the Ninth Amendment. Can I ask you this, though? Um, if we do that, if we get vocal, I, I'm suspicious of big tech. You know, they want us yeah. watching TV shows and just sitting around and being numb to all this and watching guys like you on TV wage right. the fight. We can't do that, can we? We got to no, get that, engaged. It, it's got to be everybody. And, and look, big tech, there's a whole chapter on big tech and the pervasive censorship of big tech. And by the way, we're seeing it right now. Look, look at what's happening on the headlines right now. We've got, number one, the war on Israel, which is tragic. 
but we've got anti-Semitic riots and protests at universities across the country. And this is a manifestation of cultural Marxism. Yeah. And not only that, we have big tech, we have institutions like TikTok controlled by the Chinese communists that are pushing pro-Hamas propaganda and, and are brainwashing young people. Mm. And, and, and that underscores the need to fight back right. Because this is this is exactly what the cultural Marxists are seeking to do. And, and, and if we don't fight back, we're going to wake up and the country's gone. So I think it's almost two years ago you raised these questions with the FBI about January 6th. These questions still yeah. have not been answered, not answered today by Director Ray. This was a remarkable moment. I'll never forget it. You with a senior FBI official. Let's take a look at that. Ms. Sandberg, I want to turn to the FBI. How many FBI agents or confidential informants actively participated in the events of January 6th? Sir, I'm sure you can appreciate that I can't go into the specifics of sources and methods. Uh, Did any the, FBI any agents any FBI or agents confidential or informants confidential actively, actively participate in the events of January 6th? Yes January or no? 6th. Yes or no? Sir, I can't, I can't answer that. Did any FBI agents any or confidential FBI informants commit crimes of violence on January 6th? I can't answer that, sir. Did any FBI Did agents any F or FBI informants actively encourage and incite crimes of violence on January 6th? Sir, I can't answer that. It's just amazing. And now they're kind of saying, well, we didn't orchestrate anything, but they won't go any further than that. My sense is they had people there and those people did not <laughs> do anything to prevent the attack. Call for backup. Call for more reinforcements. Have you gotten closer to the answers you want about January 6th? No, they utterly and completely stonewall. I've been asking those questions at hearings. I've been asking those questions in writing. I've, I, I've been and, and they just they that they defiantly this Department of Justice, this FBI has a brazen arrogance that they believe they're not accountable to anybody. They believe they're not accountable to Congress. They just defy. When, when we ask them questions, they do what you just saw right there. They refuse to answer. But they fundamentally believe they're not accountable to the American people. And this is something also that I discuss uh, in, in this new book, Unwoke, is, is the takeover of the cultural Marxist of government, the weaponization of the Department of Justice, of the FBI, of our legal system as a tool to attack your political enemies. This White House uses DOJ and the FBI to go after their political enemies. And, and, and right now there is zero accountability. And I got to say, Senate Democrats don't want to know the answer to those questions. And so I'm going to keep pressing. But, but the real way to get accountability is we've got to win in November a year from now and put new leadership in there that cleans house because there are hard partisans that have burrowed in and that are utterly defiant of the rule of law. You know, your job is in the Constitution. The assistant FBI director's job is not. And to see her yeah. sitting there not answering the questions, hey, do me uh, 10 seconds. If you get majority again, if saner heads prevail and we, you're back in power in a real way, you already have plenty of influence. Ashley Babbitt, are you as concerned as I am and a lot of our viewers are that we don't know uh, nearly enough about that case and um, we don't like it. We don't like the way she died and yeah. we think, uh, you know, we think there has to be accountability. Right. Look, there has been very little transparency into what exactly transpired with the use of deadly force. It is, it is tragic. She was a veteran whose life was taken that day and I think there needs to be transparency in, in, in terms of what transpired. This administration doesn't want any transparency. They, they, they want to cover up uh, what happened that day and they deliberately conflate acts of violence by, by a limited number of people. And if you commit an act of violence, regardless of your politics, if you're left wing, right wing, or wherever you are, if you assault a police officer, you should go to jail. But they deliberately conflate acts of violence with peaceful protests, the tens of thousands of people on January 6th that were there exercising their First Amendment right, and the Biden Justice Department wants to smear every one of them. It's profoundly cynical. Uh, it is. It is amazing. Well, anyway, we're we're glad we've got guys like you out there fighting this fight. Ted Cruz. The book is Unwoke: How to Defeat Cultural Marxism in America. Senator Cruz. Many, many thanks. Greg, thank you very much. And let me say to all your viewers, the book is in every bookstore. It's on Amazon.com. Buy a copy. It's fun. It's readable. 
And I'll mention to you, Christmas is just around the corner. It makes a great Christmas gift. Buy a copy for your mom, buy it for your best friend. Even better, buy it for your crazy left-wing neighbor to try to knock some sense into him. <laughs> and even better than that, buy it for your kids and grandkids so they can understand the garbage that people are trying to indoctrinate them with. All right, I'm doing the best I can. I already bought one book. I'll buy a few more now. I <laughs> Senator Cruz, thank you. Okay. Thanks, Greg. We'll be right back. You bet.